This is Bailey, who I sometimes refer to as London. This is London right here. This is their roadmap to success. Now, I'm fortunate that I did not lose any limbs uh, in the course of uh, this session. Uh, uh, Bailey here is, uh, she's, I think she has been nipping for so long, and we don't know where her background was before she uh, lived here. Sit. Um, I think it's just in instinct for her reaction. She's not even thinking about it. So there are times where she reached over to nip at me and she just ended up not doing any damage. She just, and she even slowed down and got gentle when her teeth touched me, which is kind of the opposite of what normally is. Now when a dog is uh, climbing on top of you like this, this is usually an indica indication of a dog that doesn't have a lot of respect for you. Right now she's doing it because the treat is there. Um, but I would like the guardians not to allow the dogs to kind of put their paws on them whenever they want to. If you invite the dog in your lap like I did here with, uh, with London, that's fine. But right now, the, uh, especially with Bailey, she's trying to take. So if I'm petting her and she puts her paw on top of my arm, I'm gonna immediately stop petting her. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna incorporate structure. Um, so if you want something, then you have to do it my way. Bailey, Bailey, let's sit and look at the camera. Sit. Patience is a virtue. Oh. That's fine. I'm not asking her to sit multiple times. That's one of the things the guardians have done is they've repeated the command over and over. Now these guardians actually had, as I mentioned in my other video, a lot more structure than most of my clients have. We had some rules, they had to sit at the door. I'd like some other rules uh, enforced, such as uh, not being allowed on furniture, because the higher dog sits, the more rank they perceive themselves to have amongst their pack. Um, not being allowed to be within seven feet of anyone who's eating. And also look for ways to delay gratification. So as soon as she put her paw on me, I, I took the treat away. So she got down, then the treat comes back. So just withholding or retracting and then giving at the right time can help the dog learn that certain behaviors come with a consequence if the treat goes away. Other behaviors, give me the treat, sit. All right, I'm gonna continue talking while we work, get for you, uh, wait for you to do it. Now this raising the paw can mean you can approach me or it can be a calming signal. Um, whenever I give a treat, I always want to try to keep the treat within an inch of the dog's nose, unless I really am saying no. So I'm just going to hold it up. Yeah, you're almost there. All right, so I'd like the guardians to start petting the dogs with a purpose. So that means that no more petting when the dog demands it for sure. And uh, we're, uh, if we want to pet the dog, we're going to ask the dog to sit or to lay down, and when it sits or lays down, we're gonna say just the command word, not good dog, not good girl, not good sit, just sit or uh, chill or whatever the word is. We're gonna get a sit out of you eventually here. Uh, now, if the guardians come in and we see somebody's petting the dog without a purpose, we're gonna say the word paycheck, and that person who's petting the dog has to immediately stop petting the dog, and then we ask the dog to sit again, and then as soon as it sits, then we reward it. This is a good example, she doesn't wanna sit. Now, I'm not her person, uh, but this is, if she sits, that puts her in a more subordinate position, which is why I like petting with a purpose and asking the dog to sit, because it helps them, there we go, sit, uh, uh, think of themselves as being more of a, of a passive or a follower role. Uh, also, we can use passive training. Uh, London knows how to, how to lay down with the gesture. Down. Down. So make sure that when we, when the dog, and I think I was watching one of the guardians interact with the dog and she said, come, the dog came to her and she said, sit, she didn't reward her for the come. And then we gave her a treat for the sit. So make sure that you're at least even just petting the dog under the chin or whatever it is for each desired action so the dog has more motivation to do it. And we're gonna also use passive training to reward the dog for desired actions and behavior. So the dog comes to me on its own, I'm gonna pet it and say, come. It lays down next to me, I'm gonna pet it and say, chill. It sits down on its own, I'm gonna pet it and say, sit. I'm just waiting for it to do the desired action and then rewarding it richly. After we do that enough repetition, the dog will start doing that on its own. Uh, this is an example of this would be uh, feeding the dogs. So when the dog uh, takes the first bite of their food, we say the word feast or chow or grub or whatever the word we use. We do that after every time the first bite of a meal for about a month or two or three months. After about three months, you can say feast and that dog runs over and it means, feast means I get it time, this is my time to eat. Um, having the dogs wait for permission to eat and eating one at a time and only after the humans eat will also help. Um, now, the guardians, I, only, I, did, I filmed a, uh, really more of a version of a leave it video here, um, but one of the things the guardians need, are going to need to do a lot of with her is counter conditioning and desensitization. 
So if you go to uh, doggoneproblems.com, on the top you'll see a bar that says uh, you know, home and a bunch of things. One of them will say dog training tips. Click on that. On the left side of the page over here, there's going to be a, a box. There you go. Down. That's passive training. Uh, there's a box, type in counter conditioning, all in one word. There'll be a whole bunch of videos I've taken with other clients where I kind of explain how to do it with a vacuum cleaner or different things. We did it with me just walking back and forth. Make a list of all the things she's reactive to and then knock them out one at a time. Don't try to do them all at once. Just focus on just people walking around because we don't have guests getting nipped. Uh, and then eventually do it with a vacuum cleaner and with the, the Dremel and all the different things that we talked about during the session. Uh, until she no longer is reactive to those things and actually has now been conditioned that that activity represents something good. Remember to use the escalating consequences to disagree with the dog's behavior. Remember, if you can't remember what these are, go to Dog on Problems and search for escalating consequences. I'll make a bunch of videos for those. Um, I did a focus exercise which she responded to really, really well. Now her guardian had, had, taught, had learned this from a dog trainer who held the treat up here. This lures the dog to look up here. What I do is I put it on my knees focus and wait for the dog to voluntarily look at me, then I raise the treat to maintain the focus just in my face, it doesn't have to necessarily be in my eyes. Then I go towards their mouth and say the word focus. Now first when I'm doing this, it's one second, one second. When I go here, I go up halfway between me and the dog and I stop between the dog and my vision. I want to maintain the dog's visual cue right here. Now first it's one second, one second and say the word focus after it goes in her mouth. After you've been doing it, then a day or two, then you can go one second, focus, two seconds on that second movement. And then you might practice it a day or two before, you know, and you maintain the, 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 her looking in the face for all two seconds. Eventually we want to get to the point where it's one second, 20 seconds for this movement. And we're keeping the dog looking in our face for that whole time. Once we can do that in the house, and I would do it in different parts of the house. Uh, at first do it when nobody's eating, there's no distractions, the TV's not on, it's easy for her to focus. Eventually, though, we want to do it when there's something going on. Maybe if we're cooking some bacon and there's a sizzle sound over there, or people are eating dinner. We want to create some distractions and help the dog focus on us and so, and until it can focus in the house for 20 seconds amongst distractions. The next step would be to go outside and practice on the deck, or if we have a sun porch. Somewhere where it's outside, we're going to gradually increase the intensity of the distractions and help the dog practice focusing on us in different scenarios. And the more we do this, once we get to the point where at 20 seconds, anywhere we at, then when the dog starts to stare or do some of the signs that she does that communicate that she's about to nip or bite, we can immediately redirect her after come over and practice a little focus exercise. Um, so go very gradual on that, but practice that one every day. You can also do something like where we're holding, I was flashing my hand, when she did that, I would drop a treat onto my hand uh, to give her uh, kind of a targeting exercise. And eventually when I do that, I can hold my hand over here and she runs over and touches her nose. Eventually you can transition to her touching, playing patty cake. My apprentice Sam likes to play patty cake with her dogs about this size. And she just holds up her hand and they put their paw up there and she gets to go back and forth and trick them. And it's again a nice way to interact with the dog. Um, also for her, she, uh, I would maybe look into doing some scent games with her is another nice thing. You basically kind of hide treats around the house when she's in a stay or in the other room and then tell her to go find them and use some high value treats like the Tricky Trainer chicken liver that I use so she can smell them and she goes looking for them. Make sure to practice the, uh, the dog uh, bed exercise that we went through. Um, and also uh, the thing that we want to watch out for for her signs, I wanted to kind of cover those in these. So one thing she does, she has to to freeze and stare. So when I was putting my hand like right there, now well, she's not doing it now, she was doing it initially, but when I did this, I didn't move my hand away. And when I did, the one time when she was still doing this, she did nip at me in a, in a gentle way. I don't think she wanted to, she realized halfway through and she stopped. But if she, you see her freeze or stare, now they can stare like this, or they can stare like this. I'm looking at the camera right now, but I'm orientating my body away. We call this whale eye if you see a lot of white in, there, in their eye. So if a stare, that's a big warning that she's saying, I'm not pleased with what you're doing. I'm going to freak out if you, don't, if you continue doing it. So if, the, if you see her do that, then that'd be a great way to call her over and practice the focus exercise. Um, let me see, licking the lips is a sign of stress. Um, the hackles going up can also be uh, a warning sign. Uh, breathing really heavy or breathing really slow, also a warning sign. Uh, if you can see her pupils, if they dilate, that's also a sign of excitement. Um, so if you see 
one of these signs or a combination of these signs, these are things to look out for and we want to practice. Now, practice recreating situations that she fails in. She behaves in a way that you don't want. Analyze the situation and figure out, number one, what is she trying to accomplish? So if it, she's nipping and people are moving around, she thinks that she's in charge. A lot of that will be taken care of by consistently enforcing rules and boundaries. Make sure you, do, you can correct or reward her within three seconds. Once we've identified what the dog wants to do or what it's trying to do, then I recreate the whole situation, but I play with the variables. I want to increase the distance from the dog to the sound or turn the volume of something down. Or if it's something that's moving, I make it stop or move in slow motion. Uh, I want to basically put the dog in a position to succeed. Now, if it's something she's really reactive to, we can do things like taking her out for a fetch and we give her a cooling off period, then practice that then, or after a walk, or after running up and down the stairs. Taking, burning off that excess energy. Um, so, uh, and that's something else that she's a higher energy, she's a high twitch dog. And so one of the things I recommend her guardian do, she walks her, but not as much as the guardian would like. But sometimes we're just busy, and a fetch is a game of fetch is much more efficient way of burning energy than a walk. Walk is great for leadership, so maybe we'll take her outside and fetch her, and count the number of times you fetch her, and then keep on fetching her on a cool day until she stops bringing the, the ball, and then you know what her maximum is, and then you kind of start playing with it. You know, maybe if she gets worked up, then you take her outside. You know, maybe you do it mid morning, and then you do it. Uh, a little bit after lunch and then you do it you know, during the dinner time. Just make sure she's not fetching or running a lot around when she has a, a full stomach. Their stomach can actually flip over and pressurize. And so it, usually you want your dog to have at least an hour after uh, eating before we do any strenuous exercise. But keep a journal and play with the variables until you find a combination of exercise where she seems to be more relaxed and at ease in the home. Um, let me see. Uh, also the counter conditioning exercise that we, we kind of did here. Um, I talked about that a little bit, but that's going to be a really important thing for her to deprogram her for all these different uh, things that she is reacted to. And again, just make yourself a list, knock them out one at a time, don't move too fast. Remember, she has to be sub-threshold, so if she reacts, you push too far too fast. Um, we didn't go through it here, but I'd like the guardians to practice the door exercise. Now, because the layout of the house is kind of a big area and she's a very quick, fast dog, we might get a, a cardboard box or something put behind between the banister and the back of the couch so we can slide it over and make a smaller area that we have to defend as we're practicing answering the door. But before we do that, we would want to counter condition her so she doesn't react to the sound of the doorbell, react to the sound of the knock. Once we can take that out of the system, then we can start practicing each individual step of the exercise. And remember, anything that she doesn't know how to do or she fails at, recreate it, break it down into small individual steps, help her practice each individual step before you move on to the next step. This way we're teaching her the behavior that she wants to use, that we want from her, I should say. Uh, did I forget anything, Bailey? I think that pretty much covered it. You are a very pretty dog and you're very well behaved and mannered when you're relaxed like this. We need to achieve this all the time. All right, that's gonna be Bailey and London. We didn't work with London so much, but there she is. Uh, she heard her name. Uh, uh, this is uh, Bailey and London's uh, uh, Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.